And we are live. Hello, 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 y'all. Welcome. I am Briar Harvey. This is the Neurodiversity Media Network. Today, I am with my fabulous co-host, Alex Watt. We are here on the Maiden Mother Wise One show. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the life cycle of womanhood, what it looks like, what it means, how we've internalized that. And we're hoping to hmm, break some long held in it beliefs that people might be holding on to without even knowing it. Yeah. So, Today, we are talking about sex. We are here with the incredible Kelly Ray. I will give you time, Kelly, at the end to give us all your stuff. She is an intuitive life and business coach. And I'm really excited to hear your take on this topic today. Looking forward to this one, y'all. All right, Alex, let her rip, baby. Awesome. Thanks, Briar, for opening up for us. And Kelly, thank you so much for coming today. Um, I'm really passionate about this topic, as we all know. So I'm so grateful that you are a person that represents so much and you don't have very many walls around it and you're here to help others too. So thank you for that. And although I'm under the weather, I'm really glad that we're we're all here today because I didn't want to miss this one. I'm super passionate about sex and sexuality and honoring our bodies and touching with beautiful intentions because we need to break down those barriers for people. It needs to stop being so taboo, especially for women. So the first, I have some questions and we can just bounce off each other, but I'm really excited. So I want to know kind of like, what was your first introduction to like what actually sex was? Yeah, so my introduction to sex Unfortunately, um, I, you know, I'm training my children different than how I was raised, but I actually didn't hear about sex until I was in high school. And, you know, we kind of touched on the sex ed. Now, don't get me wrong. In fifth grade, they talked about, they told little girls and little boys about periods, Mm -hmm. you know, separately. And so when I went home and my mom told me about the periods, yes, but we really didn't talk about sex until high school. But guess what? By the time sex ed came around, it was too late for me. I had already experimented and figured it out. So really in my household, um, there wasn't any talk about sex. And one of the things, we might get into this later, but I think as a result of not talking about sex from my mother, it made me not value myself as much because I didn't know how sacred sex was. And then here I was giving it away to just anybody who gave me attention. And it really made me kind of a doormat in a way as I got older because I didn't have respect for myself in in that way. So I wish I would have had that conversation with my mom, an auntie, a sister, somebody. It could have been a man, I don't know. Yeah, and for me, it's like my experience with sex was like I was abused. So the sexual information and the interaction and the conversation around it was so different. It wasn't more like sex can be empowering and sacred and loving. It was like, don't do it. That person hurt you. Don't give it away to somebody. You'll never get it back. And so the conversation was very awkward for me because it wasn't about like, this is what sex can be. This is what happened to you. They're not the same thing, right? Like it was always focused on like abuse was what happened to you. It was not like this is abuse and this is sex. So I'm grateful that they were open with me, but I was so young that it wasn't what I needed because I went from being open to sexuality to being fearful of it because it hurt me. So I didn't get to, like I didn't want to explore and I didn't want to have those experiences. And then when we'll go into that later, it's like they were actually hurtful. Mm. So, Mm -hmm. and so what do you feel like you would, you would, what did, how did you change it within your home? Like, how was the conversations of sex with your own children? So I do have one child and it's a boy. So it's a little bit different, slightly conversations with my boy than with my female. Um, if I had a female child, yeah, I've let the father have some of those conversations just because I feel like sometimes you have to be a man to know what a man's thinking or feeling or what they've gone through, because I obviously have never experienced a male erection, that kind of thing. But I can give my son the female perspective. I mean, I also think it would have been great to hear from my dad 
about, hey, what is it like to be a man? What is it, what is his needs or, you know, what's going through his head or how is he respecting a woman? And so what I'm trying to give my son, who is also a teenager, and we've had these conversations years ago, but I continue them, is how do you really nurture a, a woman? Not only sexually, but outside of sexually, but um, first of all, what it is, how spiritual it is, how it's not just something from the body. Um, I try to take it deeper, but we're, we start out with those first gentle conversations of, okay, what's going on with your body? Protection, um, pregnancy, so we've gone through the anatomy, but then because I'm a spiritual person, I've taken it to that spiritual level. And how do you connect? Because I think by the time people have these conversations, or, I mean, look at me, you know, when you're in your 30s and 40s and you're figuring out the spiritual connection, you don't missed out on a lot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I love that I'm teaching my child early about the wide range of how sex can be sacred, beautiful connection and it can be it cannot be just from a place of pain or just because you're trying to figure it out or experimenting it can be something so much more beautiful and deeper than that yeah and for me like with our kids it's like i've always tried to protect them try to like anatomy is exactly what it's called this is a vulva this is a penis this is and it was very clear about what their body parts were because it was like if i can give you as much protection of like and know your own anatomy then you can empower yourself mm. so it started there right it was like and then unfortunately because of all the miscarriages and the issues that i've struggled with for fertility they've seen different side of it because i have a husband who works away i'm home most of the time with the boys by myself and it's like there was times where my boys would be like why are you bleeding so bad and it's like okay well babe this is what this is it's okay it's called a period or yeah, right. And I didn't always tell them, obviously, I'm not going to disclose that I had a miscarriage every time because that's like, it's hard enough for my kids. Mm -hmm. They know now, my oldest does know now because he's opened that up that discussion, but then it was started there. So then it was like, well, sex is between two people who love each other and honor each other's body. And sometimes sex is not. And when it's not, it can feel icky afterwards and we can carry some shame from that. So why, how can we make it so important for the two of us or the two of you to connect and like, you know, respectfully mm -hmm. and yes, pregnancy and periods and all that disclosure, but at like, but also to make them feel comfortable in their body that they have rights to that. They don't have to say yes. Cause the boy code is really big. Mm -hmm. And as a woman raising boys, I really want to empower them that they don't have to have sex to fit in. Yeah. They don't have to have sex. To feel like a man. Yeah to be worthy to like, mm -hmm. yes, in the locker room and mm -hmm. break down those barriers of that conversation. So what are your thoughts on that? Like around the boy code and how our boys actually struggle as our girls do too, but mm -hmm. as mom raising boys. You know, there's a lot of pressure on boys to be sexually adventures, but then there's pressure on girls to, you know, be, you know, not give it up. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're shamed if you're a woman for enjoying sex and wanting to have sex and wanting to be playful or experimental. But then guys are like, yeah, go get them. Well, who in the hell are they having sex with if all the girls are being shamed? Right. Um, but the, the good thing is my son has always um, it's just his personality where he hasn't felt like he was peer pressured and he's always been able to talk to me about what his friends are doing and he's been able to discern for himself. I think he's just an old soul. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily he, I know he's here to go against the grain and do his own thing. And I encourage that. So I champion him. I'm like, yes, yeah, don't do it just because what they're doing. And, and yeah, let's think outside the box and let's be creative. Let's think bigger, mm -hmm. not just with sex, but with everything. And everything. what I want to say is that whenever you can have your child champion like that and think outside the box in other areas of their lives, it's going to translate to sex too. So when Absolutely. you show them, you know, not to follow the beat of everybody else's drum and in how they dress and how they act and how they give towards people, then it goes over to the sex is what I find out so far. And I agree with you, right? It's like, I'm helping these women who are grown experience that now, right? Honor their sacred sexuality and take back their power of what their womb is and what they want, right? It's yeah. like, I'm never going to shame a woman for being open and playful and adventurous. It's like, but as long as you understand you're taking care of yourself and you're making it for the right reasons, like become empowered and live that life for yourself. We don't have to do it for someone else. Right. And it's like, we live in a world where we should not be womb shaming anymore. Like, let's be mm -hmm. serious. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first experience? If you can remember of being like aroused as a woman. 
Um, okay, well, I guess, you know, we'll talk, I'm not sure the level of arousement, but I realized when I was a young teen, I was watching these MTV videos and I started to notice men. I'm like, wait a minute, that guy's hot. And then I was like, wait a minute, I've never thought guys were hot before. And then I started noticing there was a certain appearance of a male that kind of, you know, um, got my attention. Remember Mario Lopez from Saved by the Bell? <laughs> my <laughs> ultimate crush, like that was my man. And, and, and every, and ever since then, like I held every man up to Mario Lopez and I never found him. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I started to notice, okay, I must be, uh, growing up or something like something just naturally said that, but I never had that conversation with my mom or my older sister. And then, uh, you know, I started to realize as I was an older teen, that's when I started to realize I started having sexual urges and feelings. Yeah. And again, nobody had talked about it with me, but I didn't feel like it was shameful because it just felt natural. And then, so I, I kind of just, you know, took it from there. What about you? Yeah. So for me, it was like a variation of things. I hung out with young boys. I was the girl with the guys. And then I, they started to treat me different. And I was like, this is weird. I'm like, why are you treating me different? And then we started yeah, to watch. Boobs. Right. Yeah, of course I did. I had a huge boobs. But <laughs> at that point, it's like, I was naive. I'm like, why are they treating me different? Mm. And uh, they would watch wrestling and The Rock was on their back in the day and he was huge and muscly. Mm -hmm. And he was like my first like, oh, that's what I wanted about. <laughs> that was your Mario Lopez. <laughs> How do you... Joe <laughs> Pryor, what about you? It was 1988. <laughs> and Cindy Crawford was in this red swimsuit on the mm -hmm. cover of the Sports Illustrated oh. Swimsuit Edition. I think I remember that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I just knew whatever it was was amazing, right? Yeah. Like, I want that. <laughs> I want that. And I didn't want to be that. I wanted no. that. And yeah. that was growing up bisexual in the yeah. 80s and 90s was a Very rough, nice. rough thing. And mm -hmm. so there was no one to talk to about the yeah. fact that mm -hmm. I, I mean if it had been the rock or if it had been mario lopez those were conversations i could have had with other people but it was mm -hmm. neither of those things it was cindy crawford see and my other is demi Moore and strip tease oh man yeah. well i was yes. like i was like at first i was like i just want to be like her and then i was like no i just want her <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i had like these very interesting it was like demi Moore, this older woman like dark hair beautiful and it was like the rock Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a very interesting spectrum that I'm starting to explore. This is this is true for me too. On the other side, I have Russell Crowe, and not like clean shaven Russell Crowe, like Russell Crowe in the muscles and the long beard and the blood. Right? That's yeah. so. That's yeah. Yeah, and I remember like feeling tingly in my like pelvic area, and I was like, oh, I'm tingly, and then I was like. This is weird. Am I peeing myself? What is this like interesting? Yeah. Because we didn't know, right? And, I'm like, and we didn't talk about it. Nobody talked no. about it. We and didn't I was talk like, about this with our girlfriends. We didn't talk about this with our parents. Or what about experiencing wetness? Nobody. Not, oh, God. Nobody told yeah. me. I really wish somebody would have told me. Me too. Because then I was like fearful. I'm like, do I have a yeast infection? Is something yeah. really wrong? And then I start like going through that. And I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Is this normal? Am I peeing? Yeah, I actually saw this really funny TikTok or, or it was on Instagram the other day and this marriage coach was saying, women, if your pussy ain't getting wet, do not fuck that man. He ain't worth it. And I was like, you know what? Yes. That's a damn good indicator. Like, why am That's I correct. messing around with anybody who don't get me really fucking aroused? Like, right? Hello. I, yeah. I know. I feel bad. We have so many kids and then Jesse like lifts his shirt and I'm like, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, wait. We don't have time right now. <laughs> but yeah, and so that was like, that's how it built for me. It was like, I wasn't aware what was going on. I didn't understand. And then it's like trying to masturbate without knowing what what's going on or what or you're doing. Or if it's doing. shameful or if it's accepted yeah. or good. And then if you throw in religion on top of that girlfriend, let's not even go there. Yeah, and that comes into my first time. Yeah, we are going to go there. And <laughs> so it was like, is does this feel good? What is mm. this? Is this my... I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. And then you always hear like friends who are like, well, in the shower, it's better. And then so you're like, okay. I had a friend say that. And I was like, all right, let me, yeah. let me see what's with the shower. But it's, yeah. it's totally unknown. I'm going to tell you something so funny. It's kind of embarrassing, but 
until I had my first long-term relationship with an experienced man, mm -hmm. I did not know where my pee came out of. Yeah. Like I, I, I was like confused. Does it come out of my clit area or like, and you know, you can't like bend your head down and see really. <laughs> not and all try the way. To pee. Yeah. And so yeah. I, we were talking about this and he actually had to like point it out to me. And I, mm -hmm. but I was like 20 something. Wow. Yeah. And like we talked, we touched base on the last podcast talking about that. Like some people don't know, like men and women don't actually know there's a distinct difference. And mm -hmm. for me, it was like the first time I squirted, I was like, oh my God, I peed on him. And I like freaked out. And so I'm just like enjoying that like heightened yeah. arousal and like, and my partner was like, no, it's, he was like, he, he was like, yes, Isn't good. And crazy I was like, how sometimes those guys teach us about ourselves. That shouldn't be, that should not be the case. No. And then like the no. reminder that that is actually sexy and that is okay. Like he, mm -hmm. he is so good because in those moments he was like, you're safe. It's okay. It's yeah. not pee. You, that's just what your body does. And I was like, but does it <laughs> like, <laughs> panicking? Like, but does it? Mm -hmm. And so, do you remember like how you felt the first time you had sex? Yes. Um, unfortunately, again, yeah. um, I just did it to figure out what it was about, mm -hmm. and it was with some rando. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, again, it's like, damn. If I could take back anything that's happened in my past, it would be that. Like. You know, for your mom to at least say, okay, if you're going to have sex, would you at least give it some consideration? Make sure mm -hmm. it's like somebody you really like and, you know, you have feelings for, or you've been, I don't know, just something more, more thought, give it some thought. Mm -hmm. And instead I was over at a friend's house and some guys came over and I was like, sure, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, but I just wanted to know, what does it feel like? What actually happens? I just, yeah, again, it was before I even had that sex ed class in high school. Mm -hmm. And so... It was like, hey, I'm just curious. I want to know. And then I did it. And then, of course, I wasn't expecting the blood. And so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck? And I just pretended like, oh, it's my period. He didn't even know it was my first time. I was like, oh, I got my period or something. And then he's mm -hmm. just kind of like, you know, it was awkward. It was weird. And then I just felt like a weirdo. And then I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. And then, of course, I could yeah. feel like I couldn't talk to anybody. So, gosh, mm -hmm. if I could save one girl, one woman an experience like that, I think that would make a huge impact on somebody's life. Yeah. And it's something that I talk with like the young girls when I worked in the social work in town, we talked mm -hmm. about these kind of things and like what to expect or what not to expect. And like, we talk about all kinds of things, like how to protect yourself, how you can track on mucus and mm -hmm. your period cycles. Right. And it's like, I was trying to empower them. So they knew as much as they could, they wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And because for me, it's like my first time was with someone I was committed to <laughs> and it was awkward as hell and not good. And then we we had sex and it lasted like three minutes and then he's embarrassed. And I'm like, it's okay. Cause like, You're like I, don't I don't know, know any better. Anything, right? like, <laughs> I don't think we're going to have sex for 30 minutes because I don't even know what we're yeah. doing. Right. And yeah. then what happened played after that is actually my grandparent, my grandmother shamed me in front of his whole family. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I had not told anybody and she told everybody at the dinner that we had had sex. Oh my gosh. I'm mm -hmm. so, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like, yeah. And kinda, then she, how did that make you think about sex from then on out? Like, it oh, was I didn't horrible. want it. No, I didn't want any. No, not if that was the consequence. Mm -hmm. That, no. no. Especially like you're an abused child, then you're like learning to love your body, been through every therapy you can imagine mm -hmm. about to try and heal it, right? find a good partner, been with him for like almost a year at that point, then that happens. Then the words that continued after were she made a comment about me not being a virgin because I was abused. So that he had not been with a virgin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then religion played into that from his side of the family, which is okay. Like at the time it was heated and upsetting and everything but like now it's healed and we're good right but there was like yeah. that religious aspect you guys should have waited till marriage and it was like mm -hmm. there's now so much some more. Shame, right <laughs> like why not like why don't we just march me down the road and tell everybody mm -hmm. i had sex please mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my first experience was very and then i didn't want to i didn't want to. i physically sat in my bedroom one night and cried for eight hours and asked him to break up with me oh my gosh i asked him to leave because you didn't feel good enough? Nope. And mm. because I didn't want to, like, carry that shame forward in our relationship, I didn't want him to hate me because I hadn't disclosed I was abused because, like, I didn't know. Well, how do you talk about that? Yeah. Oh, hey, by the way, somebody I trusted hurt me when I was a child. And now 
right? And I wasn't sure where he was at because he's heard all this crazy stuff from my drunk grandma and all the religious views. And then yeah. I felt bad because I thought I pushed him to do it. Do you know, like there's all that, like you go through your head, you're like, oh. Just in your head too much. You're overthinking it. Yeah. Well, he never left and then he married me. So <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So there is a beautiful part of it, but it was very, it was very painful. Mm. And it was something that I had to be okay with because I obviously I still see his family to this day. Yes. Right. And I sit in these conversations, these awkwardness where like his father asked me, what are your intentions with my son? It's like, we've been together 17 years. We're still here. Like, yeah, I think mm -hmm. we're going to make it pops. Yeah. But then like, <laughs> so going from that to being like explorative and sexual, because we, he and I connected and I was like, if we're going to do this, we're actually going to do this because like, mm -hmm. I don't just like men. I like women too. And there's certain things that I'm comfortable with and I want to start to explore. Mm -hmm. So sex is not going to be this three minute done and I'm not carrying shame for it. I'm not doing that. And like, I don't cock shame anybody. I don't shame anybody on anything. And it's like, I was the one who carried all the shame. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how you'd be done with that. Just yeah, done with just shame done. in every area of your life. I think I'm done with it too. I'm tired of carrying the guilt for everybody. Yep. Me I'm too. ready to drop that in 2023. Let's go. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, that was my thing. It was like, it was like all this shame around sex. And then it was like, sex is good. I have a great partner. He's actually not religious anymore. And we have explored so much together. And then it was like, but then I couldn't have babies. So it was like Aww. this thing from my childhood has always just been like a monster in the room for me. And we hear so many people talking about healing sexuality and trauma. And and it's like, yes, but when you have physical damage from it, which causes mm -hmm. other things, it's hard to just let it go. Because you're constantly like, well, I can't have kids because I have scar tissue and I can't stay pregnant. Oh, my gosh. But right? obviously that didn't. It didn't that didn't like stay it. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I had DNCs and I had um, my lining of my uterus from ablation, and they call it where they oh, like yeah. shock it. And then I had hysteroscopy where my tubes got flushed and like, like you name it. And then I had a nurse come in and be like, oh, you had an abortion? And it's like, no, I had a miscarriage. Thanks for being so oh, cold hearted. Right. Gosh. But that's put me on this path to like talk about sex, talk about birth, talk about everything. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting because it's like, once you started to honor yourself and your sacredness and your sex, how was your sex after that? For me? So that's for you, Kelly, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think that after you've been, okay, so you know how the saying, when you know, see what you don't want, then you know what you do want. It's yeah. that contrast. It's all about that contrast in life. And I'm, I'm learning to accept more of that. Okay. This is what I don't want. Okay. I'm not liking this feeling. Well, then it just gets me more clear on what it is I do want. And I'll say what I do want now is that deep intimacy, that yeah. connection on that soul level, the more of that kind of like we've talked about the divine union type of mm -hmm. coupling where it's not just about, okay, let's just have sex for the physical from this lust, from this passion, but let's really align. Like mm -hmm. I feel like sacred sex is a opportunity for people to be the most vulnerable than mm -hmm. they could ever be. Um, it's a place where you can heal yourself or possibly, you know, exchange healing, you're receiving, you're giving, but, um, it, you know, I'm not going to say that can happen for everybody, but you have to be willing to open that space and create that. And that's what I'm moving to now. I'm not going to say I'm the most experienced and know it all. I'm still yeah. learning, but I'm curious and I'm open and I'm wanting that. And I know it's there. And I feel like I'm just learning more about it. The more I show interest, the more I'm open to it, the more I talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas before, like I said, I grew up not talking about it at all. So I'd never learned how to voice my needs, my wants mm -hmm. in the bedroom or in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And now I'm figuring it out as I've gotten more spiritual and been more empowered. Um, no, I'm going to need this. You know, like you said, it's going to be longer than three minutes. And you know what? Maybe their relationship doesn't necessarily take my relationship or the traditional relationship exactly. or the relationship depicted in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm more I voicing. Yeah. And I think the big thing is, is like when I started voicing more, I was like, I'm not just being a bitch. Like you, now you're just surprised right, that I'm saying. The standards here are that if a woman voices anything around her own sexual pleasure, that it is very taboo. I think I've been married for 10 years. Oh, wow. 
before I had said to my husband, you know, sex isn't over when you come. You come. Yeah. I know. Because... And, and and the look on his face, I mean, it was a real deer in headlights moment. What do you mean? For him because, and my husband is not an inattentive guy, right? He was putting in the work, but that acknowledgement that when the penis and vagina ends doesn't necessarily mean sex is over was just a like mind-blowing moment for him it was mm -hmm. it was really and it kind of changed my worldview too because to have to say that for him to recognize that that was the case was really it was just so unknown for both of us yeah and for my husband it's like he's not an inattentive lover he's like the person that like he just wants to make you happy and i'm so grateful for that but there's times where it's like the world's got to reverse here. Like, I want to, like, I want to love on you and I want to feel you. And what do you want to try different things? And he's always been open. He's never shut me down, which I'm grateful for. Uh -huh. But there's moments where it's like, if I'm orgasming and I need some kind, something in that moment, we're to the point where I don't have to explain it anymore. Because sometimes because of scar tissue and mm -hmm. certain things down there, it's like, I actually need him to pull out and pause for a second. Oh, okay. Because I don't want my body to reject him. And I don't want to tear or like put any kind of pressure on those areas while they're contracting. And it's like, I do internal massage. I talk about this with my other women too. And it's like, but because of the things that I've gone through in life, we need to just, mm -hmm. he needs to just honor that like I'm having one and he like holds on to me and everything. Mm -hmm. And then when the coming down, it's like, now we can do it again. Now we can, mm -hmm. but I need to like relax or I immediately reject him. My whole body just like seizes up and pushes him out. Mm -hmm. And it's not always like that, but there mm -hmm. are moments where it's like those heightened ones. I do mm -hmm. need a pause. Being mm -hmm. able to say that though, right? Being like, I really am enjoy being with you, but I need you to pause. Mm -hmm. And please don't be yeah. like, <laughs> please don't think Well, that might anything. benefit him too. You know what I mean? You just extend the whole thing a little bit longer doing that pause. So absolutely. And then I was thinking like on top of that, it's like marrying a religious who was religious man who has these morals and ethics who you want to spank you that conversation of like you're not actually hitting me you're yeah. just like hitting me yeah you're not hurting me sweetie <laughs> <laughs> right and then for him he was like i don't want to do that like it was like immediate he's like i don't want to put hands Aww. on you and it's like i appreciate you and i love you and i know how much you respect me but you're not hurting me so having those conversations sometimes i just want to hang from the hook on the wall that's no, all that's all that's all right Sat and then, around a little exactly but then it got like playful where i'd smack him on the butt or something and he'd be like is that all you got Aww. <laughs> because he was getting warmed up to the idea of doing that yeah mm -hmm. yeah gosh all that programming there's so much layers to release and and like you said uh briar where your husband didn't know that's you know sex didn't stop there men don't get those talks either no <laughs> not at all so not at all. Voices. they have, have porn and increasingly oh, they have horrific porn right yes. porn today is so much more extreme and violent than it was in the 80s and 90s For sure. and so my husband learned on debbie does dallas right <laughs> like yeah. that's that's not what boys and men are getting today and mm. there's a real need now to continue to have those conversations because if that's what they think sex is that's a real problem yeah and the i think the big thing is is like also kink like a, a letting people know that like not all kink is like that what is being portrayed and it's like there's still consent and there's still boundaries and there's still respect for people you don't go past that it's like they talk about to their safe words and mm -hmm. you know but it's like talking about all those with our partners even if we're not willing to go that far in our relationship because it may evolve it may like yeah. being open to like what turns you on what excites mm -hmm. you and so i mean i want feel, that for my son too you know like yeah. everything that you're talking about i want my son to have a healthy sexual relationship where he doesn't feel shamed and he can explore and 
you know, I just, I don't know. I wish that there was just something more available. Like I know I've talked to you, Alex, I'm like, you should create a total course for teens and, you know, yeah, teach them all the things. And, and I almost feel like there should be a introductory to sacred marriage course. And it covers all the sexual things and all this stuff that one, your mom didn't even know to tell you or to teach you, you know, they're being passed down what they passed down, what they passed down and what the porn industry is teaching you. So there's just a lot of misconceptions out there. And unfortunately, you have to figure it out as you go. And sometimes that can cause pain, trauma, mm -hmm. suffering, relationships to dissolve. And there's got to be an easier way. Maybe this podcast is a start. <laughs> I'm hoping it is because I'm evolving off that like we've talked about, right? And it's like talking about how our womb is a sacred space and sacred connection in our marriage is not mm -hmm. actually talking about religion in our marriage. It's mm -hmm. talking about like honoring each other, like mm -hmm. honoring and caring and respecting and being vulnerable because and acknowledging that we all make mistakes. We all stumble. We all yeah. fall down. Are we willing to work past that or are we willing to just let it crumble us, right? It's like at some point, yeah. sometimes relationships have their time limit and it comes mm -hmm. to an end and they've taught us beautiful lessons and important. And we just yeah. know that we're evolving and that that's okay. Being able mm -hmm. to have those conversations and talking with other people. I know 70-year-old women who have never had an orgasm. Huh? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And we talk about it and she's like, girl, if I want to do it back then. And she's so funny. And, Missing out. <laughs> right? And she, she talks about it because she didn't start having orgasms until she moved into a senior's house. And she met a new man. They get freaky up in there. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a swingers club. <laughs> it's a swingers club at the seniors club. But, like, That's funny. to watch her be happy and full of freedom. Wow. Yeah. It's like. It's never she, too late. It's never too late. So it's like, well, how can we evolve our own sexual adventures and explorations and not shame people and be open to these conversations and talk about anal and talk about these things and be like bodily fluids coming out when you have sex is kind of just normal. Instead mm -hmm. of shaming each other, why don't we pause and just quickly clean up and not like make it a thing? Why, why is yeah. it a thing? Yeah. Right. Because how often have you had your period ha come after sex? Because I know I have. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I didn't think like was it was close. on the verge and then it <laughs> happened. Or, you know, maybe it, you were st starting to spot and you didn't realize it while you were doing it. And then, yeah. you know, and say, hey, don't there's nothing to freak out about. <laughs> and like not shaming our youth on like you will be interested in men and women. Chances are most yeah. of you will. And you'll be interested yeah. in like why. So don't shame yourself on the why. Just look into it. Is it because you are attracted to the way that person is? Is it something you see in yourself? Is it because you're just bi and that's okay? Is it because, but like talking about that and talking about sex isn't just like orgasms and anal and vaginal and mm -hmm. low jobs. And like, mm -hmm. it's like, there's so much more. We have so many erogenous zones Players. on our bodies. How can we? do that? How can we touch those layers? I think a briar had brought up a good point earlier when she had said she, she realized that she was attracted to Cindy Crawford on the cover. She's like, I want that. And I think, oh, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for men, but a lot of women, as a woman, I can see beauty and I can mm -hmm. respect beauty. I can say, that's a beautiful woman. That's a fine woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. That woman got a nice butt. Yeah. And, but when do you realize that it's more than just appreciating how beautiful a woman is and it's more of that desire? Nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm. So you could could totally be bi or gay or something and not even know because I don't we know don't you're trying to fit it. in yeah you're trying to fit in and nobody talks about it well and even shame from our friends in high school I remember tons of girls being like you're you're a wrestler you're a lesbian and it was like oh my gosh I don't care what you think of me right like it's like okay I think that's so cool you're a wrestler <laughs> it was an experience it was an experience <laughs> I wrestled on a team with 36 boys there was me and another girl that's it so it was interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. But like, it doesn't matter if you're a lesbian. Why are we? Yeah. What do you right? even care? Like, Who the fuck are you? <laughs> what do you care about somebody else? Who are you get to on, say get what I life. can do in my bed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so then that grows with us as adults because then it was like, well, I am bi. I know I am bi. But it's like, and I'm married and I'm in a cis relationship. But like, not all of me is cis. And then like being okay with saying that because people are like, well, you're married. It's like, yeah. yeah. And if something ever happened, probably never married to another man. Let's be serious. Right? Well, I've, said that. <laughs> I've said that before. <laughs> I've said that. I'm like, mm, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. It's, it's like, yeah, I found the right one. 
this time. Like, and he was mad, but probably never happened again, really. Yeah. Right? It's like having those conversations and being open about it and being okay with it. It doesn't matter, right? It's like, yeah. how can we keep building on like, how can we explore sex? How can we feel comfortable in our bodies? How can we touch ourselves? And it's like it's talking about it, just like we're doing yeah. today. You just got to start somewhere because none of us are going to feel comfortable completely unless we start talking. And then it's like, oh, you feel the same thing? Oh my gosh, you get the same sensation? Oh, it's totally normal. What? Yeah. Like, it's got to start. With us, right? I and guess. even, yeah. And talking about how our vulvas are shaped different and like, yeah, okay, there might be nine okay. like, shapes. Yeah. You <laughs> put that post on Facebook about the different ones. I studied those pictures and I was like, I had no idea because I've only seen, you know, what's on TV. And I thought everybody was that way. And then I was not. And so I was like, God damn, all these years I was judging myself and I didn't need yeah. to. <laughs> well, and everybody's like, well, a fupa or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's just because we've grown into women. That's not actually just because we're fat. Just putting that yeah. out there. That is like yeah. an actual like shape mm -hmm. category. Yeah. Just putting that out there, right? Yeah. And for me, it was like, I have pigmentation, like loss in certain areas of my body. And I do mm. on my vulva. So I used to like joke. I'd be like, it looks like a Dalmatian when I go to a doctor. And they'd be oh. like, what? They're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> like, it's always been like that, though. You're unique. That you have to warn a doctor like mm -hmm. that really says it all to me right here how terrible this is that you have to issue hyperpigmentation warnings to a medical doctor mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. otherwise you don't know what you're going to be getting when wow. the reaction and, yeah. and that is if you can't predict the reaction you're going to get from a medical provider how the hell can you pre Predict a reaction from anyone else in society. Well, mm -hmm. and even being open to share that, like we all look different. We all like look different. We smell different. We have different shapes. And it's like knowing that like our labia, the outer lips, is like an erotic thing for men. So they started taking it out of porn because it was too right. erotic. This is a true wow. story. And it's like, mm -hmm. but then like, 80% of our women have larger labias and now we're not talking about it, right? Like we're, yeah. And even like the fallacy, because I no longer have a cervix, right? I had a hysterectomy. I don't have a cervix. Mm -hmm. And so then this conversation of like cervical orgasm and then people being like, well, you can't have one. Yeah, I can. It just doesn't <laughs> look the same as yours, right? Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. conversation of like allowing people to know they still exist. They still have them within our bodies just looks different right yeah. so the pressure at the end for me hurts because I don't it's all sewn up and healed and stuff but it hurts right so mm -hmm. it's like but actually just back like an inch and a half is the gold spot now because oh. it's all heightened and so like knowing that like nice. that's a good spot for me right mm -hmm. did you find that your body changed for sex after you had your son um, well, yeah, I mean, I noticed that after my son, you know, things changed. And even like you said, the labia, I think had gotten bigger. And I was like, Oh, my God, I'm not desirable anymore. Because again, in the porn industry, you don't ever see that. And so I'm like, Oh, this is horrible. I'm old, or I'm saggier. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought something. Um, and I, of course, you know, with motherhood and being busy, um, the the, you know, the, the, the frequency that you have sex or it just changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so then you start to second guess yourself. Um, and then just like the anatomy changed a little bit. So then I was just like, oh no, am I done for? But really you're not. It's, I think that's just some of the society, what they tell you. And we're constantly being programmed like, oh no, you know, you're worn out after you've had several kids or something. Um, but that's not really the case necessarily. So we've got to stop listening to other people's fears. Mm -hmm. And as long as you and your partner are okay with how things are working, then it's okay. You don't stop questioning yourself, stop doubting yourself, right? I was in a birth where the doctor was like, do you want me to do the father stitch? Ha ha ha. And I looked at him and I was like, that was very ignorant of you. I had one. I didn't know that I had one. I had one. It made sex painful pretty much until the birth of the next child. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend who they stitched her extra and she they could barely have sex and she actually had to have surgery to have it fixed because what? it was so bad mm -hmm. because a doctor thought it was a good idea keep her tight 
And like, yeah. let's talk about that. It's like, if a woman is pushing you out, it is not because she is tight. To be very clear, if a woman's body is pushing you out of her, like there's something else going on because yeah, her body is, her. nope, she doesn't. She's rejecting you. That's not because it's like, oh, that's so tight and hot. It's like, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's not enjoying it. Chances are, right? And it's like, and then there's circumstances where it's like, I know that I get really tight and like I'm sore and like different things. It's like, so, uh, you know, he removes because it, it's better for both of us. That's very mm -hmm. different. But like, you always see those movies like, oh, she's so tight. It's like, she is not enjoying that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, everything that you see on TV, let's get real. I mean, you know, as much as they're doing it for those shows, I don't know. I don't know if I believe the looks of gratification on their faces. Um, and there's well, more to it than just the opening too. You know what I mean? There's also the inside. So by that doctor just saying, let's tighten her up with that stitch, that doesn't necessarily mean there's, you know, there's more to it than what's going on. So um, that really pisses me off to hear. Me too. I, was, I was super mouthy in those kind of parts. <laughs> super mouthy. <laughs> but I also like the big thing I want to talk about is like, how often do you see a condom open in a movie? Or in a show, oh or even talk about. It. Yeah, never. Yeah, when you say that, it's like never. It's yeah, like I really have to talk like... about stuff, but mm. sometimes you'll see them on, which I applaud and approve. I guess of the porn in which that happens, but it's always already on. There mm -hmm. is never any of the actual fumbling around of applying a condom, nope. which is let's mm -hmm. be honest here, always a little bit hysterical in just yeah. the action of yeah. condoms going on aren't neat. It doesn't happen easily oh. or prettily. There's nothing <laughs> it, nothing not graceful sexy about that or graceful. There you go. That is the exact yeah. correct word choice. <laughs> And so we just skip it as though it doesn't exist. Yeah, but it's like a main factor we should be teaching people. Girls and boys should know how to put on a condom, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Like, our, we should be teaching them. And um, bringing humor into our sex life. Because there's times where it's like you pull off your shirt and you elbowed your partner in the face. And it's just, like, messy and funny. Mm -hmm. And, like, being able to, like, go with the punches and not just, like, get mad and let everything happen. It's like, whoa. Yeah. And we all have kids, kids who are needy and like want our who attention. Busted and we, on you. Yeah, who try to like, <laughs> and you try to like make time for it, right? Yeah. And funny. I'm not just like a bedroom person. So it's like, I really try to make time for it because it's important yeah. for our connection because I'm the one that feels worse than probably he does if we're not. Mm -hmm. Because I've now healed this abuse in my body and stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like, if I'm not honoring it and loving on it and touching it, it's like, I feel disconnected from myself because I've worked 30 something years on healing it. Yeah, it's important to you. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of sex, <laughs> do you have any funny stories or anything that you want to share? Um, I mean, funny, nothing really, except like, literally, you know, my son just storms around the house when he wants to. And literally, I've fallen off the bed trying to jump up, you know, too fast, or, you know, he'll walk in and like, he'll see my husband, you know, down on me or something. And we act like, <laughs> we're just like, well, you know, here, we're just, you know, hanging out and doing that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that that's the extent of that is having kids. And, and so I applaud your uh, tenacity in making sure that you and your husband have that connection time and especially in different places other than the bedroom, because that can make it a little bit more, you know, magical, spice it up a little bit. Yeah. It's well, important. and like as teenagers, we did it on back roads in a car. That was like our <laughs> we go to a lake and we were just like, yeah, and it was awesome. And you go skinny dipping and it was just like our our healed relationship was based on like being adventurous and being, mm, so it's like, I need to continue to be that way for myself. Not because he yeah. asked me. Yeah. I love and that. So, mm -hmm. Because it was like, I had so many times we were doing it in a car and another car would pull into like a parking lot and we'd be like, ah, just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be at the lake and I'd be like, I don't have a top on it. I don't know where my top is. And people show up and like, it's still like fun. Right. Yeah. And I think when we're healthy with our own bodies and love ourselves, our children see that too. Mm. It's like, they're not being exposed to anything. Right. It's like, but they're seeing mm. us be playful with each other. And like, mm -hmm. we talk shit to each other. That my son, mm -hmm. my oldest son says that's his favorite thing. So we always like 
Aww. like joke back and forth and say whatever. But I we teach I them healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so healthy interaction. Yeah, and I think like being open to sex, right? Being open to it, being open to like you're gonna fumble, you're mm-hmm. gonna enjoy certain things. Um, really learning how to like ask for what you want, how to be fingered properly. That's very mm-hmm. key. It's not just yeah. like. Ah! Yeah, like slow down, speed up, more pressure, less. It's almost like, you know, you're going to the massage therapist. If I can tell my massage therapist I need more pressure, then surely I should be able to tell my partner, right? Right. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. And it's like, for me, it's like, I do need pressure. I do need someone to hold me sometimes. Mm -hmm. I need, like, Mm -hmm. while I'm getting there. It's like, I do like that. Knowing that, like, there's pressure spots around the opening of our vagina, right? Not in the Mm -hmm. ball bear, by the, like... And think pe- people are like just the tip, and it's like sometimes that is very hot. Sometimes that is all I actually need, yeah. because things changed for me after my hysterectomy. So sometimes it's like you know, I don't need to be like deep pounded. I just need yeah. to be like the opening yeah. played with. I've noticed that on different times of my cycle, mm-hmm. my I guess my cervix drops down further. Yeah, and so I'm like, don't be trying to go, Mister, you know, deep man on me. Like that's yeah. not that's not fun. <laughs> So I think it's super important to teach women, girls, whoever about get in tune with your body. Like it's okay to explore. It's okay to tune in. It's okay to sit there and feel it and also ask your partner to be present, to help you feel it. That way y'all can both make it pleasurable for both of you later on. But if y'all don't take the time to get to know your own anatomy and what you like, you're never going to reach that magical thing that you're looking for right no and like partners who have been together a long time when is the last time you saw your partner masturbate like right it's like how, do you know how they like it do you know their techniques i know they just trying to get it done most men at yeah. that point right but it's like yeah. well when's the t- last time you were like present for that to, not to, really like I know in the past I've asked like show me how you like it and you know he'll show me with his hands and then I'll mimic it and I'll do it so when I'm doing oral I'll use my hands or whatever yeah. um but no I've never just really exactly. sat there and just like got the popcorn out and said yeah put on the show big boy you know <laughs> and I think there's something there right my relationship started when we were young Alex you mm-hmm. were pretty young and so there's I feel like there are things that probably would have evolved if we had both been older Older. when we Mm -hmm. found each other, right? That might have been, but you have to grow together when you start young. Yeah. And I like mentioned it the other day. I was like, maybe we should play with ourselves like together, Mm -hmm. like separately to see like if there's something new you like or something new I like. (laughs) My partner's like, I yeah. think that that just sounds like a great idea of warming yourself up. And it's fun. It's yeah. fun because then you can just be like playful, be like, you can't touch me yet. And like yeah. play off that like the way. It weight. builds the momentum or the suspense. Yeah, I like that. And then honoring like, you know, because the average amount of time limit on sex is like from three minutes to 10 minutes. That's the average like for everybody. So it's like, yeah. so how can we incorporate fun and touch and play and connection and like yeah. without just the penetration? Cause like, as Briar said, sex isn't done just because you go or I go or mm-hmm. right. It's like, there's so much more to it, mm-hmm. but we're still hyper-focused on sex is penetration. Penetration. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, from my perspective, this is my point of view. It's like, if you identify as queer and you've had some kind of sex, you've had queer mm-hmm. sex because you identify as queer. So why mm-hmm. are we shaming people if they like a little bit of penetration? That doesn't matter. It's about yeah. our, it shouldn't be like the, you can have this or you can have this. Yeah. We're right? multifaceted like, beings. Like we're multi-layered. I feel like society just tries to put everybody in a box and label them so they can control, so they yeah. can feel comfortable. And yeah. when you don't necessarily fit in their box, now all of a sudden you feel shitty about yourself. You know, exactly. like we got to break out of that. Yeah. And like shaving people, it's like if you're inviting people into your relationship or you're going to swingers clubs or you're doing fetish or you have a daddy, it's nobody's business. As long as your partner and you are respecting each other's boundaries, it doesn't matter what anyone else yeah. thinks. because we're that's people putting their perspectives projecting upon you and most of the time Mm -hmm. people are just jealous they're not they can't go there in Mm -hmm. all types of sex right i have Mm -hmm. friends who it's like they just do like penetration that's it and they say make comments when they ask me because we all know i'm not quiet (laughs) yeah i they like they're i've had my friends be like i'm actually jealous of you Mm -hmm. because he won't go there 
And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. well, how can you open it up in a way that they would be interested in it? Because it's not mm-hmm. about gay, straight, whatever. It's about honoring our bodies and our sacred mm-hmm. connection and having, um, when we have those orgasms, our desires, that, our desires, those orgasms where our toes tingle, our whole body feels like mm-hmm. it's being lifted off the ground. That's mm-hmm. what we're gearing for. That's, that's the end when we're being sacred with ourselves, whether it's with a partner or by ourselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Alex, how are you helping them get that? So that's very good. Uh, I have one-on-one sessions right now and it's all about sexual health and sexual freedom. It's liberation about touching with good intentions. And I offer a variety of things. Some are just touching with intentions where we heal after sexual trauma. The other option is kink. It's like getting very clear on like how we get excited. People think kink is just whips and bondage and stuff. It's not. It's so much more than that. It's often just like the way our body wants to be touched, pressure, cold, that's considered kink. So opening up the conversation that is bigger than that. I also have my program, which is full, but it will be rolling back around. It's becoming your own medicine. And it's talking about honoring your body, becoming what you need from yourself. Well, that is amazing. Kelly, where can people find you? You know, right now I'm, I'm mostly on Facebook. I do have an Instagram account, but I don't post on that so much. So if you're interested, really just look up Kelly Ray Healing or Kelly Ray on Facebook. And um, I have lots of links for my services where you can book appointments for either readings or blueprints or coaching. I have, I'm also a channeling coach. So I help people who are interested in expanding their gifts. But um yeah, just come hang out and have some fun and mm-hmm. enjoy my quotes and put some funny gifts on there. I love that. And that's, that'll be fun. <laughs> mm. Ladies, this has been amazing. Alex, give us the one thing you think people should know about sexual health. Mm. That it's not standard. There's not a one thing. I think we walk into sexual health education and we look at what our teenagers go through and we think it's just one thing. It's not. It's geared, when you work with me, we gear it specifically towards your needs, your desires. And we figure out if they're actually desires or they're just the thought of because you've been lacking for so long that it becomes a need. So yeah, I think that's a big focus. Y'all, this has been amazing. I'm very glad we could do this today. We will be back with Alex in two weeks and we will be talking about... Birth. Childbirth. Mm-hmm. Childbirth. Yeah. First you have sex. Then you, then have you get baby. pregnant. <laughs> then there's this baby thing at the end of it. Mm-hmm. And like the rest of this conversation, it is absolutely loaded and weighted with shame and guilt. Mm-hmm. And that is what we are trying to overcome here. Y'all, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. If you would like to reach out to Alex directly, her info is in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you back here next time for Maiden Mother Wise One. Have an amazing day, y'all. Bye now. Bye.